Welcome back to the Transhumanism Tech Channel, I'm Elise Sue. As stated by Gartner, the transhuman era officially began in 2018, and this is where we are two years on in 2020. Let's take a look at the current state of transhumanism. Firstly, research and development into drugs and death is progressing pretty well. Trials of existing drugs on the market, including rapamycin and metformin, took off a few years ago. These drugs are used to treat organ rejection and diabetes, respectively, and are approved drugs that are currently on the shelves and which are approved to treat these medical disorders. They are currently trialling these drugs to test its efficacy to extend healthy human lifespan. In mice, it was found that they extended lifespan by up to 24%, which is pretty impressive. Trials are currently underway to see if the same results can be replicated in humans. In the HBO series Silicon Valley, the CEO of tech giant Hooli hires himself a blood boy to keep himself young. The CEO would receive transfusions of blood directly from this blood. This technique is called parabiosis and young blood is thought to keep people young. Whether this technique works is yet to be proven. And by the way, if you're interested in transhumanism, we've partnered with Transhuman Apparel who makes these awesome sweaters and t-shirts. Their t-shirts are really comfy and perfect for working from home or even the office if you are going in. Transhuman Apparel aims to raise awareness about transhumanism. They've also got a lot of really awesome designs on their website. It is a wholly owned by transhumanists. So please go buy a t-shirt to support them. And I've included the link to their website below. So continuing on with therapies to extend human lifespan is gene editing, which is where a person's DNA sequence is altered, generally to repair damage or remove a harmful genetic defect. This could mean inserting, deleting or replacing DNA in a person's genome. A popular technique is CRISPR, which uses gene scissors made of enzyme and RNA to slice parts of the sequence. CRISPR trials have been carried out all around the world to treat diseases such as Alzheimer's, diabetes and even cancer. And China has been the boldest in using CRISPR in an attempt to treat lung cancer patients. Several years ago, it announced it had undertaken trials in about 80 patients, but since then, not much news has been released. Senescent cell therapies are also in development and in clinical trials. Senescent cells are cells that have stopped multiplying but which stay in the body. These are known as zombie cells and could be harmful as they release inflammatory proteins that can lead to age-related diseases like cancer. Therapy is being developed to clear out our bodies of these sen senolytic cells and have attracted funding from the likes of Peter Thiel and Jeff Bezos. The most promising research may be in NMN, which is a NAD plus precursor. NAD plus is a coenzyme found in every cell of your body, but levels of NAD plus naturally fall with age. Dr. David Sinclair from Harvard, and who is a fellow Australian, is undertaking research into how this precursor could help humans extend healthy lifespan. Previously, he undertook research into resveratrol, which is a chemical found in grapes. Resveratrol in large quantities could potentially provide protective benefits against the development of chronic diseases. Dr. Sinclair founded and sold a company actually based around his research on resveratrol. However, more research is underway to test its effectiveness. Secondly, freezing your body in the hopes that one day when the technology is available to cure you of the disease that would have killed you in the first place is another option. Cryogenics is the science of preserving your body by lowering your body temperature and then by pumping your body full of medical grade antifreeze to preserve it for potentially centuries. The process is intricate and is not simply freezing a frozen body as doing so would mean the ice crystals that form damages your human tissue. This process used is called vitrification, which is deep cooling without freezing and it puts our cells in a state of suspended animation. There are around four well-known cryogenic companies in the world, some not-for-profit, which offer people the chance to preserve their bodies in a frozen state should they want. The most well-known company is probably Alcor, and they currently have thousands of members who are or who are waiting to be frozen when their time comes. 
Check out these masks too. They have awesome unique designs that are designed by independent transhumanist artists. These masks are non-medical grade but they help you express yourself even when you can't show your face and particularly great when you need to wear face coverings in public where social distancing is difficult including grocery stores or pharmacies. Best of all they're washable and made up of two layers and available in adult, teen and kid sizes for every kind of face. And another point is we might all be living with brain chip implants if Elon Musk has his way. Neuralink is the brain computer interface company founded by Elon Musk. He believes that one day we may have to merge with machines to remain relevant when artificial intelligence becomes as smart as humans. Brain computer interfaces are a system that connects a human to a computer. The device that connects with your brain can be in the form of an implant or a device that you wear on your head. The device measures the activity of the brain in the form of electric signals and devices like these allow you to communicate or control technology such as driving a car just by thinking about it. Elon Musk Neuralink is creating brain computer interfaces that use threads that are thinner than human hair to connect to your brain. These threads require nanobots to insert these into your brain. With brain computer interfaces, we may be able to send messages directly to people's brains. Not only that, it could allow us to enhance ourselves cognitively, giving us better memory, increased intelligence and faster thinking processes and who doesn't want that? With these brain computer interfaces, we could upload our consciousness to a machine and internet and this will allow us to achieve the next point which is, we may all live in a simulation if we don't already. Some theoretical physicists and philosophers believe we're already living in a simulation. Right now, that is. However, we may end up creating a simulated virtual world to live in ourselves within this simulation. A place where we could go after our biological bodies fail us. So I guess we'd be living or building a simulation within a simulation. So if the simulation theory is proven correct, then it would not be hard to imagine we can create virtual worlds as rich and detailed as the one we live in right now. So we may end up living in a server farm, taking up rack space and not miss or even realise we are without our protein based bodies. In the Amazon Prime series upload, a man called Nathan is sitting in a self driving car which malfunctions and he is involved in a really bad accident. He ends up in the hospital where he is given the choice to either have surgery or to upload his mind. But due to pressure from his girlfriend, he uploads his mind into the virtual world called Lakeview. A lot of old people in there because it's frankly pretty expensive to live in this virtual world called Lakeview. So this world has all the trappings of the real world we live in. People can pay more for virtual real estate, they can pay for expensive meals and coffee, and even golfing seems to be a rich man's sport in this world. While we may end up building worlds where narcissism, consumerism and even the evils of capitalism are rampant, we could also be giving people freedoms and choices they don't have if they lived in reality. In Black Mirror's San Junipero episode, where this virtual world concept was also explored, a dying woman and a paraplegic woman can live young, healthy and without disabilities. Things we can only dream of doing right now. In the meantime, we could turn to 3D organ printing and bionics to re repair our body parts. 3D organ printing could save the lives of people who are desperately waiting for an organ transplant. 3D organ printing is similar to traditional 3D printing, except that cells and growth factors are used instead of plastics and metals to manufacture parts that mimic natural human tissue. This technology could improve the survival rates of critically ill people and improve quality of life for those who have lost function in an organ such as a liver or kidney. Organovo is one company that does 3D organ printing. There's also the Australian company called Inventia Life Sciences that has developed 3D bioprinters that create realistic 3D models of cells. The current use case is printing samples of a cancer patient's actual tumour so that the effectiveness of different cancer treatments can be tested. However, in the future, 3D organ printing could also be on the cards. Bionics have changed the lives of people born without limbs or who have lost limbs. They are getting so good that some people may consider replacing their own limb with a bionic one in the future. 
Bionic arms, for example, allow people to grab onto and move things just like a human hand, but can also give them super strength arm too. There has also been some controversy that prosthetic limbs used by athletes give them an unfair advantage as their muscles tire less easily. The jury is still out on this, but it may not be entirely fair as athletes who do use prosthetics may have to compensate in other ways. Mobius Bionics makes an advanced bionic arm called the Luke Arm, L-U-K-E, in several configurations, but one issue is that bionics may not be available and affordable for those who need it the most. Open Bionics sought to solve this problem by developing affordable and open source 3D printed bionic hands for amputees. If you want to hear more about transhumanism tech, then click here or here. If you want to hear more about transhumanism tech, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also like this video.